What we're looking at here is a sight glass on my auger fuel feed for a charcoal gasifier. And what you can see right there are two little copper tubes that are sticking up inside of there. And what those are is air spuds that allow me to clean this lens off. I'm going to give a little demonstration of that real quick. So that way if this just ever gets too clogged up and dirty, a little puff of air can clean that glass off. Now I got this idea from some equipment I seen in a power plant that I worked in. I do a lot of scaffolding jobs so I get to look at some of that cool stuff. And one of the cool features I noticed on one of their sight glasses was they had a little air connector directly outside the sight glass and two little air spuds available. You can see there's one on this side as well. But I just thought that was cool and I wanted to post a quick little clip of that idea in case any of you guys have had any problems with your sight glasses becoming clogged up because that has happened the last design I did in fact completely caked itself up and the LDR circuits that I have hanging all over the place here were not working so they were reading and the fuel level was full when in fact it was just a dirty sight glass so in the future I may deploy this tactic to uh, run a feedback loop so I know where my fuel level is. I'm having trouble doing that, but there you have it. In this test, I'm gonna see how much fuel is administered from just a couple of seconds of power into the combustion chamber. The combustion chamber capacity is 80 milliliters, but I'm thinking I only wanna fill it about 30 milliliters or 40 at a time, so I'm going to hit the switch and see how long it takes to give us that 30 or 40 milliliters. And I'm also going to leave it on until it hits the 80 to see how many seconds that took. And here we go. And that actually gave me 100, which is a little too much. So I need to calibrate the trigger system when it's finally hooked up to an adreno and that there is the sight glass and turn on that yeah what the heck so that was a pretty miserable run but you get the idea. Not a lot of dust at all. Okay. Try that one more time just to get an idea of the output of this thing on this setting. Oops. <laughs> All of this stuff was in here at one point. I'm simply cycling it through to get an idea of how this thing behaves. This essentially is what we're looking at up top. It's a very powerful auger. Not only do I have a significant gear reduction at this angle, or this 90, but I also have a planetary drive here. And I believe I have it in the lowest speed. Pretty sure I do. But uh, yeah, it's working pretty good.
So there's the auger feed. In the next video, we'll have this thing hooked up and we'll be seeing some fire shooting out of it. Okay, in this video, I'm, I'm going to be testing the triac at the midpoint because I'm concerned about the behavior of triacs at low power settings. Something else triggering on the system could shut my triac down on me. And I'm not sure why they do that. So I need to get a little bit more flow data on the output of this auger. That's what we're gonna be looking at here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that was about a 30 milliliter shot. I'm thinking that's about how much fuel I'll be shooting in there each time. Anything more than that would reduce fuel production by inhibiting airflow. So it would be nice to get this thing to run slower, but I don't have the gearing or reduction drives needed to do that. This time we're gonna just see what, how long it takes to fill up the 150 milliliters. So I can get a baseline of milliliters per minute. Pretty close. You can see the size of the particles that it's pumping or elevating, whatever you call that. Okay, here we go, and we'll do an 80 milliliter burst. Oops, so way overshot that time. I was trying for 80 because that's the volume of the gasification combustor. And that's really hard to see those other readings on the back. Just gonna do a full unit again. That's about 135 milliliters that run. And we're a little over, probably 160 milliliters that time. Unfortunately, all this grueling test that is needed to run an odd machine like this, I have to know what operating parameters certain constituents of this device run at. So I've kind of got to learn its behavior. So I am basically just video archiving for that reason. I don't expect this to be very entertaining at all. So that's not where we're going with this. This is actual research footage. Certainly not very exciting. Okay, I'm going to try for a 30 milliliter burst. And it looks like just a real quick on and off is all that's needed for that. That was about 15 that time. I think I'm about out of fuel. <clears throat> go ahead and do another full run. I think it's empty. Sure is acting like it. So that's something to note. The less fuel in the auger, the slower the discharge. The less fuel in the hopper, I mean. Forgive the terminology. I'm still familiarizing myself with the nomenclature involved in these devices.
This thing was almost full when I dumped it all in this container. Wow, big old piece came out that time. Just good to know that it can pass pieces that large. Man, this thing is just... Thank you, some fuel. That finally empty. Nope, I was wrong. It's getting there. So, timing is going to continually change throughout the hopper level. Whoa, that was a big old chunk that got forced out. up with an auger on my head if I ain't careful. Well that's it. I am empty. And that was at the halfway setting. Running it right here poses a, a risk. If the blower were to kick up at this point right now, it would shut my auger off. Something about triacs that make them sensitive to voltage changes in the load line they're connected to. I could plug that light in and it would blow the triac on that circuit over there to my burner. It doesn't necessarily blow the triac, but what it does is causes the triac to shut off. Or I don't understand it. So just one thing to note when you're Here's a quick look at the auger. It's basically just a masonry drill bit that I have modified that had some pretty um, good dimensions to it. Basically, I just have a gasket here made out of rubber with a really tight fit to hopefully keep as much gas from coming out of the top of the hopper as possible. And it also has two seals there. I don't know how much those are doing, but at least they're reducing the leakage. And basically the very end of that oxygen bottle is probably about right here, I think, somewhere in that area. So it's almost sticking all the way out of the oxygen bottle throat. So it's really not that big of an auger and it isn't actually necessarily transporting carbon is just agitating it. Probably could have put anything down inside of there just to shake the carbon up 